Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Worship with Trinity United Church in North Bay for the season of Easter 2021. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Today's virtual worship is a Sunday that's sometimes referred to also as Christian Family Sunday, and we hope that we'll have something for every member of your family today. My name is Reverend Ted Harrison. Whether you are joining us via YouTube or, or Kajiko on our cable t television or uh, DVD, welcome. As you may have heard in recent weeks, we have a spring and summer newsletter circulating out there now. The newsletter announces a new Reverend Ted's Secret Book Club for 2021. If you want to be part of the book club, uh, you're, we're encouraging you to give $100 to the Trinity Roof Fund before May the 23rd. You could give less. You could give more. <laughs> Members of that club will receive a copy of the mystery book at your home um, in June, and we will be meeting virtually, or most of us hopefully live, come July. And that will be a book party that will, uh, that will discuss the book and what it means for our spiritual lives. More about that later. And, of course, in your newsletter. If you're not on our newsletter list and you would like to be, then please call the Trinity office and let us know. 705-474-3310. We want you to be connected and in the know. As is our discipline at Trinity United Church, we recognize that we meet and we pray on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe people of the Nipissing First Nation, with whom we seek to live as family. So let's get started on this sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, April 2021. First, we'll hear an announcement about receiving training for the Blue Umbrella Program. I hope you're intrigued. And then we'll have our call to worship with the Johnson family. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maddie Zremont. I am the Public Education and Health Promotion Facilitator with the Alzheimer's Society. I'm here today to let you know that we are working with Trinity United Church in order to have it become a dementia-friendly church. With that being said, I will be holding two 30-minute presentations to chat about dementia and Alzheimer's disease, as well as how to incorporate some changes in order to have your church be dementia-friendly. We are striving to have 75% of participation, but the more the merrier. If you are interested in partaking in one of these two presentations, please contact Lisa, Cindy, or the church office to save your spot. The presentations will take place via Zoom on Wednesday, May 12th at 7 p.m., as well as Thursday, May 20th at 10 a.m. I look forward to seeing you on Zoom. Our call to worship for this Easter season is based on Psalm 133. See how beautiful and pleasant it is when God's people live together as family. It's like being appointed with precious oils. It's like refreshing Mount duo raining down with laughter and joy. God has proclaimed us beloved and blessed. Intending us to love one another into eternal life. Let us worship together in loving unity. Amen. Amen. To feel a little less alone during this pandemic Easter season, we have been praying a timeless prayer from Psalm 51. In Latin, Psalm 51 is known as the Miserere. Please join me in praying those words, which will appear on your screen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and restore a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold within me a willing spirit. Amen. 
throughout this pandemic, many of us have been using the language that worldwide we're all in the same boat. And I think that's the spiritual truth uh, that our Trinity Virtual Choir reminds us of in this, in this prayerful refrain called, We Are One. Okay, we have a special treat for our storybook today. Not only do I love today's storybook because it's a superhero theme, but I also love the practiced simplicity of the illustrations. At first, the art might seem a little messy or even kind of rushed, but if you spend some time with it, it is perfectly planned and composed with fun little details that you don't always see on the first read. We really have to take our time with the... Uh, with the artwork in this great book, which is a translation. It was originally in French, and this book is called The Day I Lost My Superpowers by Michael Escoffier and Chris de Giacomo. The Day I Lost My Superpowers. <clears throat> The day I discovered I could fly, I knew I was special. Wow! So I started practicing non-stop to develop my superpowers. <laughs> Splat! I had a few setbacks at the start. Whoosh. But I worked hard and got better and better. My favorite superpower is to make things disappear. All I have to do is concentrate. And poof, it's gone. <clears throat> Huh. Sadly, it doesn't always work. Apparently it works better on, uh, on cupcakes than it does on mushy green peas. I also like going through walls. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a hammer down here. And she's actually made a hole in the wall to do a puppet show for her toys. You can see little bits of the wall down here. <clears throat> I also like going through walls, walking on the ceiling. How is she walking on the ceiling? And I like becoming invisible. Well, is she really invisible? Look where she is. She's hiding under the bed here because she's been sticking plungers to the ceiling, hanging an umbrella from the chandelier, drawing pictures on the wall, and again, knocking a hole in the wall for her puppet show. I think I'd want to become invisible too. When I get bored, I try new things, like communicating with animals. Go fetch! Ooh. Sit. 
Get up! So far, I've been most successful with plants. Freeze! <laughs> Bloop. Sometimes I think that I'm probably not even human, and I must come from another planet. How else can you explain that I can breathe underwater? Bloop. That I can move objects without touching them. And go back in time. Wah. I always wondered if my parents could tell if they knew about my superpowers. Until one day when I was happily flying around in the backyard. And suddenly splat. No more superpowers. Gone. Finished. And then my knee started to hurt, and I began to cry. <laughs> Mom came running. She gave me a magic kiss. And then you know what happened? I felt all better. Even, even if my knee still hurt a little. So now, you know what I think? I think my mom has superpowers too. And that's the end of our book. Thank goodness for moms on days that we feel super and on days that we don't feel so super. I'm going to call on our junior choir now to sing our moms a special thank you song before Diane Brownlee and Adam Smith come to share us a reading from the epistles of the New Testament. Or grandmothers. Hi, Dommy. My name's Diane Brownlee. I'm Adam Smith. And we're your scripture readers today. Today's scripture story comes from John's first letter to the church, chapter 5. This reading feels like a good fit for Mother's Day because it speaks to us about being children of God. Here are John's words. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know, know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who comes by the water and blood, Jesus Christ. 
not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. <laughs> Thanks, Diane and Adam. And now, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, God, for you are our only rock. Amen. So in part because it's likely to be another pretty quiet summer, at Trinity we've decided to have another Reverend Ted's Secret Book Club. The idea is if we're going to be stuck at home, we want something to show for it. So please consider this your personal invitation to read a meaningful book with your Trinity Church family. Uh, Reverend Ted's Secret Book Club was the brainchild of of Karen Johnson, who has encouraged me to share what has shaped my spiritual journey in the hope that that experience might be, might be life-giving for you and for others. Without giving away the name of this year's book or author, this book is about your life, about the joys and the challenges, uh, the mistakes, the, the, the missteps, the million and one things that make, make your life yours and, and nobody else's. The scripture that Diane uh, read to us uh, with a little, little help from Adam is the first letter of John. And John is another author who is convinced that God works primarily through us through our particular lives, through our particular stories. That God works through the, the grit and the embodiedness of our, of our real human living. Through all of our imperfect efforts to love the world and to love each other, to love our friends and love our, uh, our uh, strangers and love even our enemies. In fact... John is all about love. John is the one that writes, God so loved the world. John writes, uh, God loved us first. God, uh, John says, uh, love one another. John says, God is love. John says, perfect love casts out fear. This letter is just love, 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 and more love. John is obsessed. In, he's in total awe of the love of God all around him, and he can, he can feel God's love pouring into the world. For John, God's love is this overwhelming torrent. It is an over, uh, overflowing power. God seeks to love the world and absolutely everyone in it. In today's reading, John says that God's love conquers the world. So that love is inescapable. It, 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 it overpowers all of our defenses. John's advice about the love of God boils down to basically this. Don't fight it because you will never win. Instead, let it possess you. Let it allow, be allowed to flow through you. Participate in the love of God. Let it wash over you. Grab it. Ride it. Share it. Now, you may have noticed John also talks about keeping God's commandments. This is the phrase he used, keeping God's commandments. But clearly... Clearly, he's not all sort of scrupulous and, uh, and nitpicky about religious rules. Because what he says about keeping God's commandments, a phrase that he uses three times, is that it is really easy. His phrase is, God's commandments are not burdensome. Because if you flow with the unfolding love of God, the commandments... 
the commandments take care of themselves without a whole lot of, of effort. If we look at the world and we look at our lives through the lens of the Apostle John, the best and easiest way to live is to live in love. Any other way is, is resisting the will of God. It's like swimming against the current. It's fighting against what is unconquerable, the unvanquishable love of God. And isn't that an amazing perspective? I want to share a poem with you. A poem, uh, it's called, uh, it's named Callings. The writer of the poem, uh, Tara Moore, believes in that astounding big love of God. And she's thrilled that each of us in our smallness nonetheless gets the priceless opportunity to let that love shine through us, to, to pour through us through the particular lens of, of your life. I think it'll help if you can see this poem, Callings by Tara Moore. Callings are dispatches from the universe about what work is yours to do. Callings are your assignments for bringing light into the world. Oh, wait. Here's what they really are. When you take the great love for all life, when you take the great power of service, when you take the energy of the universe, the desire to extend, expand, and amplify life, and filter it through the prism of your gifts, your abilities, your circumstances, your opportunities to serve, what you get is your calling. Big love for all life. The great love filtered through the prism of you. Don't want to miss out on that, do you? Let me read that last part one more time because I think, this, I think this will be the blessing at the end of our service too. It's about how our lives become, a, become a, one small container for the big love of God. Here it goes again. Big love for all life. The great love filtered through the prism of you. Don't want to miss out on that, do you? Amen to that. I read today's Bible reading uh, several months back uh, as I read ahead in, the, in, the, in our recommended readings of the lectionary. And that line about God's commandments are not burdensome immediately made me think of a classic song. I think it's from 1969, The Hollies. It's about how love is not a burden. The song is called, He Ain't Heavy. He's my brother. I asked our former board chair and pie lady extraordinaire, Darlene LaFerrier, with a little help from Brenda McClay, if she would sing that song for us today. He ain't heavy. He's my brother.
to carry him. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. So on we go. His welfare is my concern. No burden is he to bear. We'll get there. And I know he would not encumber me. He ain't heavy. support me in so many ways. I can't think of a better way to honor you than to make a difference for others. Mother's Day can be more meaningful, it can be more sensitive, it can be more inclusive, it can be more compassionate. It can be more generous. Mother's Day can be more. And that's why when you make a special gift through Mission and Service this Mother's Day, you will directly support families in need in Canada and around the world. You will help provide things like parenting classes, respite care, health clinics, safe shelter, and education to families who need it. And when you make a gift, you can choose to send any one of a variety of free e-cards that I guarantee you, you won't find on the shelves of your local card shop. Give a gift to help families and let someone in your life know they are your inspiration. Together, we can make Mother's Day more. It's good to know that this Mother's Day we can honor our mothers through gifts to the Mission and Service Fund and to our churches. Many church members and friends support their church via pre-authorized remittance. Others still give via check, 
These days, more and more people contribute via e-transfer, and we receive some donations through the donate button on our website. Welcome to our church community, and thank you for whatever ways you are able to, to contribute, including financially. Let's pray to bless our givings and all of our, all of our offerings of love. God, you call to each of our hearts, offering that your great love might flow through us to the consummation of your kingdom. Enable us with a vision for justice and compassion. We pray today for the world you love, for life in all of its majesty. May we hallow your creation as you do. Even as we are distanced from one another by, by fear and pandemic, help us to reach out with our hearts that we can be present to each other's needs. And may we give with our time and our treasure, with our skills and our talent, with our strength and our passions. May our love, may our love be a perfect echo of your love. We pray in the name of the one who brings us comfort and peace, both our lover and our beloved, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now we continue praying, singing the words entrusted to us by Jesus, and then together proclaiming the words of our beloved, a new creed of the United Church of Canada. Hey, Batman, do you know the new creed? Well, I do. It goes like this. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in, in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to, to love and serve, serve others, to, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. 
We are not alone. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. To God. Thank you for being with us today in our worship. Thank you to all of our tech team who keep our worship going on and on through this through this interminable lockdown. Thank you to John Roberts, to Lisa Blay, to Eve Harrison. Thank you to our leaders today, to uh, Diane and Adam for our reading, to Cindy for inviting us to be part of the Blue Umbrella Project, to our finance committee and its chair, John Hafflitson, for keeping us on top of what's happening with the Mission and Service Fund. Thank you to Wes and Karen and Jared and Michelle uh, for our call to worship. Thank you to Darlene and Brenda for their work on a great soulful tune. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Betty Ferris, and to our Trinity Virtual Choir. Thank you to my mom and to every mom for being the best today and every day. You all have superpowers. Please remember Trinity's Dial for Hope phone line ministry, coordinated by Reverend Kathleen McCallum. For free, anyone can call 249-506-0377. You'll hear messages of hope and encouragement that are changed and refreshed every couple of days. We have video versions of those same messages via Trinity's Facebook page and our YouTube channel and our weekly cable TV show. Again, I want to share with you those words uh, of opportunity and of blessing from the poet Tara Moore. Take the great love for all life and filter it through the prism of your gifts and your abilities, your circumstances, your opportunities to serve what you get is your calling. Big love for all life, the great love filtered through the prism of you. Don't want to miss out on that, do you? Well, if Tara Moore's words aren't enough encouragement for you, we now have Brian Booth from the Trinity Choir to sing for us Go make a difference. See you next week. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the salt of the earth. God to let the people see. The love of God for you and me. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden but be seen. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the hands of Christ reaching out to those in need. The face of God for all to see. We are the spirit of hope. We are the voice of peace. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Difference in the world.